Okay, so last class we did up to here, alright? It was information systems, information systems for supply chain management. So we did up to here. So today we are going to start with inventory management across the supply chain. Inventory. Inventory money. Across the stock. Raw material with the body, it can be finished goods, it can be raw materials. It is a store, 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 it is a from materials, they can be finished goods, but it's inventory, alright? Now, inventory management is the process of efficiently managing the constant flow of stocks into and out of an existing inventory. Now, ki bolt se, j, excuse me. So, is a process of efficiently managing, efficiently, alright, efficiently, money, it doesn't waste anything, it's the best way, so, so the best way to manage the constant flow of stocks, managing the constant flow of stocks into and out of an existing inventory, so we have existing inventory, alright, now it will go, some, some stock will go out, some will come in, right, but we can't, we cannot take unlimited inwards, we cannot uh, give unlimited outwards, right? Either it will overflow or it will finish, right? So just to manage the constant flow, the flow is be constant, it cannot be over or under. So doing the best in the most efficient manner and managing the inventories so that the flow is always normal, we can meet the production levels, we can meet the manufacturing levels, we can meet the uh, uh, retailer demands or the distributed demand. So that we can avoid situations like I don't have any raw materials right now available for production. So that we can avoid situations like where a distributor is asking for goods and we don't have. Or it is common. Maybe there will, there will be situations where we do not manage the stocks properly the production, if uh, they can keep uh, some going and we have a lot of stock inside already, then what will happen? More stock will come in and we won't have any space to keep those. So we will have to rent other space that will increase our cost. Alright? So to avoid such situations, to avoid such situations, we need inventory management across the supply chain. Across the supply chain, not in just one stage. Alright? Now, the process usually involves controlling the movement of stocks in order to prevent the inventory from becoming too high or too low. That's what I say. From preventing the inventory becoming too high or too low. Thus, competent inventory management seeks to control the cost associated with inventory. Now, a good management will always try. Halata management, at a competent management shop, so much extra with the inventory associated cost gula to control the cost so that they don't waste so much money because of mismanagement. Just because they couldn't manage the inventory properly, they are incurring high cost, all right, which they could avoid. Now, a competent management needs to control these costs, okay, and they will control it through this inventory management system. Now, there are three main aspects of inventory management. So one is time, one is buffer stock, one is accurate record of finished goods. So let's go with time. An understanding of how long it takes for a supplier to process and order and execute a delivery of materials. Now, time factors. When we talk about inventory management, we need to know that my supplier, my supplier of raw materials, when I place an order, 
at the order place cost so I need to know how much time it will take to process the order and then send the goods to my place right I need to know the time all right it, it, it can't be that uh, like I call him up I need right now no it can't be like that I know that it takes a certain amount of time so I like it right? it's so my time yeah so I, I need to, I need to uh, keep knowledge of that time inside my head that whenever I order I know that I am keeping the time on hand so that it comes it doesn't come late or it doesn't come early I'm a supplier the time like it the time that supply means I need to be aware of that all right now in other words it is related to how long it takes for those materials to be transferred out of the supply inventory knowledge about these two important lead times makes it possible for you to know when to place an order and how many units must be ordered to keep production running smoothly so when we know the time it takes my supplier to process the order and to send the product to me so I will know I will know this knowledge will let me know when I will order to my supplier and when and what amount should I order and how many times should I order alright so that my production remains smooth it doesn't uh, have a disruption or interruption. Alright? Any question? So, where to place, when to place an order and how many units? If I know the time, I would know the best time for the order. How many? I the Jami. If I know my supply needs this amount of time, and within this amount of time, I will be needing this amount of units. So if I have the knowledge, I will know when to order and how many units to order. Now, the second aspect is buffer stock. In short, buffer means backup. Buffer means backup. It means that I am supposed to keep this level of stock always, but still, still as a backup, I will keep an amount of stock. Whether it's needed or not needed, considering it will not be needed. I mean, don't it lack bay? I need say one ton of raw materials right now for my production. Now that's the optimal requirement right now. But still, still I will keep 200 kgs of raw materials just as a backup. If something happens, anything can happen. That's called a buffer stock. Another one is reserve. Hmm. You can yeah, you can consider it as a reserve. It's a backup, alright? So, buffer stock is additional units above and beyond. Above and beyond the minimum number required to maintain production levels and it is a key to effective inventory management. So, it is the additional units, additional, alright? Above and beyond the minimum number required. So, the minimum amount I, I require Above that, whatever I order, whatever I keep on hand is buffer stock. Alright, so that there is no uh, interruption in production levels. I am making it properly, and this is the most important thing for uh, an effective inventory management. Because anything might happen. Anything can happen. That you might need uh, urgent raw materials or urgent finished goods. Maybe anything can happen. A distributor can call up and say, say that I got a big order, an immediate order I mean, the urgent order is coming, I'm going to give it to you. It's not going to happen, it's not some VIP may order, some government or emergency, same as anyone. Any, any emergency situation might come up and they might, they might require some new raw materials of production or a customer might require a custom order for the order. It's not So this, this will help at that time. So accurate records of finished goods is a finished goods also. At the point, what about the problem? Till now we were talking about mainly raw materials. Now we are talking about the accurate records of finished goods. Accurately maintaining figures on the finished goods inventory makes it possible to quickly convey information to sales personnel as to what is available and ready for shipment at any given time. Now, when we have the accurate information about 
what products we have, finished products we have on hand. Our sales people who are on the ground or on the retailer shops or on the distributor or with the distributors, whoever is bringing the money, they need to know what we can deliver right away and what we can't so that they maintain the report or they maintain the word in that way. Because if they say that I have this, but then they contact me and I don't have this, then their report will be affected, their reputation will be affected, my branding will be affected, right? My product, my product's value will be affected. Yeah. But, sure. yeah. but but if the sales personnel I I communicate efficiently that I have these products on hand and I can deliver within this time. Then the sales personnel will communicate to other people in that way. Alright? Tahale ki hobe? Wakande kuno? Miscommunication hobe. There won't be any miscommunication and the sales process will be smooth. No bad reputation. Alright? No disappointment. So these are the three main aspects of inventory management. Time, buffer stock and accurate record of finished goods. Time is to have the knowledge of how, what kind of time my supplier needs to process process the raw materials and then deliver it to me so that I can know so that I can know when to order and how many units to order to keep my production uninterrupted and smooth. Now the buffer stock is also this kind of a backup which we keep beyond my beyond our minimum requirement. So we have a minimum requirement for the production levels. So above that, we'll just keep some additional units on hand so that we can do that during emergency situation. All right. The third is accurate record of principles so that our sales personnel can know what they can really offer and what we have on hand so that the sales communication is smooth and not interrupted or has any disappointment with the consumers or the distributors or our clients what the money is being made. Right. Any questions, Nikhana? Any questions? Sir, we have a lot of questions. Sir, real-time information is a kind of borrow value at the same. Real-time information is a kind of borrow value at the same. Yeah, I mean, it is our main need. I think that the book is that the communication among the whole supply chain stages has to be clear so that everyone is updated. Because we have to tell you about this, we have to tell you about this, and we have to tell you about this. So, it is a source. If my factory says something, and my warehouse person says something else, then it will affect my reputation, right? That's the most basic thing. जेनारेटरेंट <laughs> फल्टेज uh, obtain some bad reputation, the whole chain somehow gets affected. Now, supply chain relationship. Now, I think, in my perspective, supply chain relationship is the most important because there are a lot of stages. Maintaining a relationship is crucial. There are a lot of stages. Maybe we have high technologies, maybe we are integrating information system at its best, but still, at the end, at the end, eventually we are we are dependent on human relationships, right? So, an effective supply chain requires managers to establish and form closer, long-term relationships with supply chain players. 
what are supply chain players? The main people who control each stage of the supply chain, all right? So managers. Managers have to establish, they need to establish close and long-term relations. Long-term and close, so that the communication and the consideration among the all stages, short stages, relationships which will manage up and handle everything now thus the key element in a supply chain is for you to emphasize on developing good relationships with key suppliers developing good relationships with key suppliers to increase value and reduce total cost of goods now if I develop a good relationship say I am the manager of my company or I am the procurement manager of my company alright if I develop good relationship with my main suppliers, for example, I might be a garment manufacturer. Now I need what? I need uh, threads, right? I need yarns, I, I need uh, textiles, kapur lage, na? So those, they are my suppliers. So if I maintain a good relationship with them, so it, it adds value to me because, or to my organization because when I talk with them, Chances are that they'll give me priority or they'll feel good about it. They'll feel good about it or they'll, they'll be efficient in working with you and effective in working with you. Because that's human nature. That's how it works. Correct. Right. And reduce total cost of goods. Now, how does that happen? If I have good communication with my suppliers and if I am doing business with them for a very long time, you know, dealing in bulk, alright? So I can negotiate with them because I have a good relationship with them. If I have a good relationship with them, I can negotiate with them. Now and every now and then, right? Because of our relationship, talks about now and then. Ask it, buy ask it, like now and then. Ask it, like buy ask it to support them, ask it to come and then. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So in the end, you can tell them. Some more. Now, this is due to complexity of global supply chains in, in, involving long distances and sometimes facing language barriers. <coughs> language barriers, therefore it requires companies to manage their relationships well. Now, if we think on a global perspective, when we think on a global perspective, the supply chain management is very complex because uh, not everyone is from our nation, not everyone has the same culture as ours, right? So we are handling people across different nations with different cultures and with language barriers. So it's very important that we have good relationship with them, right? Because we already have so many barriers. So the best, the least thing we can do is have good relationship with them. And this is very effective and this is very crucial. And people uh, usually emphasize on this, especially managers emphasize on keeping good relationships because of this complex supply chain culture in this global perspective. We have brands, we have companies who export outside of our country, right? So they have supply chain there as well. Alright, so they have to maintain good rapport, good relationships, so that the barriers they already have do not create more problems for them. Alright? So, types of relationship. Now, there are official types of relationship, alright? The first is a vertical. What is vertical? Top to bottom, right? Go up or to go down, so like this, alright? So vertical is the traditional linkages between firms in the supply chain such as retailers, distributors, manufacturers, processors and raw material suppliers. So it's, it's, it's as if from the most basic stage to the last stage. It's a vertical chain because someone is a raw material supplier Someone is a manufacturer, someone is a processor, someone is a distributor, right? Because they are not doing the same work. They are a different stage of production or different stage of the supply chain 
one after another consecutively, right? So when we go like that from the most basic to the final stage, it is called and keeping the relationship across across all these stages, alright? It's called the vertical relationship, alright? Now horizontal. Horizontal means business arrangements between firms that occupy parallel positions in the supply chain. Now let's say let's say we are manufacturers, alright? My supplier is also a manufacturer. If I am a garment manufacturer, I need some I need clothes or textiles or yarn from a textile manufacturer, right? So on a level we are on the same position. We are on the same position. He might be my supplier and I might be his client, but we are on the same position for business, right? So when we keep relationships in the same position across different firms, then that is called horizontal relationship. Clear? Any confusion? Right? So, that's the internal of the brother. No, 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 supply chain. This is across the supply chain. This is across the supply chain. One is that we are keeping relationships from the most basic stage of our product to the end stage of our product. Alright? At every stage. One after another. Is that Some internal? No, it's not internal. That's vertical. Vertical. Yeah. But this is inside the company or what? No, no, no. You, 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 can't, you can't think about the perspective of, on the, of the company because every supply chain or, or, the, or every other stage in the supply chain can be different companies. Right? One company might be the supplier of our raw material. Right? Another company might be the manufacturer. We, we need to think about the perspective of a product. A product can be made involving different companies. Right? Uh, someone might uh, make thread. That's one company. For, for example, spinning wheel. Spinning wheel, they make threads, alright? Now from threads, someone make yarn, that's textile, the textile company. From textile company, someone makes garment. So that's a garment manufacturing company. So these are three different companies. But the product is the same. The end product is a garment, a t-shirt, or a jeans, alright? But these are part of the supply chain of that product. All these three stages, yarn, then uh, thread, then garment, these are part of a supply chain. But this is a vertical or horizontal? This is vertical. vertical. And what's the difference between that and horizontal? I'm sorry? What's the difference between this one and the horizontal? Now it's so I what, what, what I just said this, uh, yeah. give me the example of these three. Yeah. This, no. So these three, they, they, these three are manufacturers. Okay. Three of them are manufacturers, these are horizontal. Okay. But now, let's say that someone is giving the thread. Someone is making the yarn, someone is making the garment, someone is storing it, someone is uh, a, no, so forth. Someone is uh, carrying it, transporting it, someone is exporting it, someone is shipping it, it be, all right? Someone is distributing it, someone is wholesaling it, someone is building it, all right? And, and relationships among all of this from the first, most basic stage of the supply chain to the end of the supply chain, all right? This is vertical relationship. But when we are on the same Business position for particular manufacturer, right? Now, a distributor is not a manufacturer. A logistics uh, personnel is not, not a manufacturer, right? A wholesale is not a manufacturer, but the, uh, the thread, or the, the spinning is a manufacturer, the textile is a manufacturer, the garment is a manufacturer. Now, when this kind of uh, same business position across different firms, they keep a relationship together, that is called horizontal. So the third is full collaboration. It's a mixture of both horizontal and vertical. Business arrangements between firms that occupy both vertical and parallel positions in a supply chain. So this is the most realistic thing because in today's world it's, it's not like someone will just keep the horizontal one and someone will keep just the vertical relationship. It's a mix of both. So this is the most real, uh, realistic part is full collaboration. Now improving supply chain relationship. In implementing a good relationship, companies are often faced with challenges of managing the players in the supply chain, which is very normal. They will face challenges. They will face what they have. Managers often assume 
that the personal relationships within and between companies in a supply chain will fall into place once the relationships are established. So, again, they're emphasizing on personal relationships, all right? So, they're saying that supply chain will fall into place once the relationships are established, once the relationships among the stages of the supply chain are good, then the supply chain will work effectively. This, this, this is the perspective of managers, and this is even I agree with this. All right, this is how it should be. If you have a good relationship, you can do anything. I mean, in a proper way. Most managers, sorry. However, we should understand that managing relationships among the various personalities in the organizations is often the most difficult part of the supply chain management initiative. So, they are also saying that in the supply chain management initiative, managing the relationships among various personalities because in different stages of the supply chain there are different companies, different companies have different hierarchies, right? different positions, different people. So keeping your relationships among all these people, all these personalities, it's, it's very sensitive and it's very difficult. It's the most challenging part actually. Alright? Because it's it's basic human nature. There are human errors which you can't uh, just simply handle like a technology. If a technology, if a, if a technological product gets uh, defected, we fix it or we throw it away. But relationships, we cannot, we cannot throw it away, right? Or we can, we cannot fix it immediately. Our relationship takes time to be built, and it takes a lot of things to carry on, and also it takes a lot of things to end it. So it's the most difficult and the most challenging part of the supply chain management initiative. Most managers emphasize the development and maintenance of good relationships with the customers and suppliers and suppliers. So most managers they emphasize on developing relationships with especially their suppliers or the raw material suppliers because without them they wouldn't be able to make a product, right? And the clients who buy the product. So they they get the, they give the most priority in making relationships with the, their suppliers and their clients, which is reasonable. Fair enough. <coughs> Now, the challenges faced by supply chain managers. The challenges faced by supply chain managers. What is wrong with this? The difficulty in establishing good supply chain strategies. How? Good supply chain strategies are difficult to establish. The creation of separate chain of activities with every new product innovation leads to clashing of strategies across supply chains of a new company. So what they are saying that while making any new product or any new innovation, it clashes the already made up strategies we have in the supply chain. Right. If you think about it, let's say we already have an established business an established supply chain where our uh, established or our, our current products are running. Now, if we make a new product, maybe it's different, maybe it's innovative. Now, we'll, we'll need different strategies for that. Naturally, we might need different strategies for that. So, that might bring conflicts and clashes across the supply chain because communication is sensitive. At the same time, supply chain strategies also should be aligned with the specific goals of the companies such as maximizing market share or increasing profit. Now, while making the strategies, some people, they get derailed from the actual motive, from the actual objective of the company or the business. The actual business or the actual motive or the objective of a business at the end of the day is to you know, maximize market share so that they can acquire more market, then they can make more sales, and they can increase the profit. That's the most basic thing a business wants, right? So sometimes strategies are the key. It to one of the objective Objective the show We kind of get derailed from the objective. Our strategies do not end up serving this actual motive of our business. All right. Cost of the system and maintenance of the system. So it is challenging to design and operate a supply chain with 
minimum total system costs and systems wide service levels maintained so now all these days we spoke about you know creating a structure creating or integrating information systems in supply chain to have an effective supply chain right now, so, so this they cost a lot you know they cost a lot so and also it's not about just an initial investment it's also about the maintenance Indeed, it is often difficult to operate a single facility so that costs are minimized and service level is maintained. So, if we take up this cost just for a single facility, it becomes difficult because it's not worth it at the end of the day. We might be getting an efficient system, but for a single facility, it becomes challenging. It's not worth it at the end of the day. Because we are not that big, then uh, we won't be getting the economy of scale, right? But if we, if we were, you know, huge, if our uh, size of the companies or the size of the corporations were big enough, we have lot of lots of stages, lots of concerns, lots of uh, what can I say? Lots of company together. Then having a supply chain, effective supply chain management or structure or you know, putting investment for having good technology across the supply chain will be effective because in the long run it will bring that return. But if our scale is small, then having good investment is not worth it. So third is uncertainty and risk. So these are the common thing everybody has, uncertainty. So uncertainty and risk are Uncertainty and risk are inherent. You can't avoid it. It will come. Inherent to every supply chain. Ashbe. Ashbe. Customer demand can never be forecasted precisely. We cannot ever be precise that this will be my demand. We always have to make a forecast. We always have to make a guess. An estimation. You, you can never be certain. I mean, what can I share? What I have demand Never, right? So it's uncertainty. Now, travel times can never be ascertained. Can can you ever be sure how much time will your logistics company need to deliver the product? You can make an estimation, but you can be never sure because you might have a road. Your fuel might run out. Your, your uh, truck might run out of fuel. Truck might uh, in, uh, face an accident, there may be strikes, anything, your truck might, uh, might uh, break down, anything might happen, right? So, uncertainty, risk. And lean manufacturing that focuses on reducing supply chain costs significantly increase the level, increase the level of risk within the supply chain. Now, lean manufacturing, new lean management level. Lean manufacturing means production or manufacturing in the most efficient way where we where we have the most minimum waste. The most minimum waste so that our production is efficient. We don't waste much, we make the best of it, our production is optimal, alright? We don't have much wastages or much leftovers. So don't when we go to do that, it's very challenging, it's very risky. Because uh, the level of risk within the, the supply chain it becomes greater because we are all working towards you know controlling our waste that takes cost that also brings cost if you do not do it properly because waste cannot be controlled easily waste control easily everyone needs to know how it happens if something goes wrong in just one part of the supply chain then it gets affected all over because if one person does, if one stage doesn't know how the manufacturing is done, all right, then they wouldn't accommodate those steps the manufacturing companies take if they want lean manufacturing. All right. <coughs> now, thus, supply chains need to be designed and managed to eliminate as much uncertainty and risk as possible as well as deal effectively within the uncertainty and risk that remain. Now, the 
thing is that we never can avoid uncertainty. We can we can never avoid risk. It will come. Problem hobby. Problem hobby. Shamosha hobby. It, it, there is no avoiding. It. There is no escaping. It. So what our what our job is to have an effective supply chain management so that we can eliminate as much uncertainty as possible and as avoid as much risk as possible. We cannot eliminate whole of it. We cannot wipe it out entirely. We need to have a supply chain management. We need to control in a way where we face the minimum amount of uncertainty and the minimum amount of risk. That's our day-to-day motive. So that we can have an effective supply chain management. So that's the end of chapter one. Any questions? In this slide, any questions? Ali?